it's me man it's me it's double h it's half up we are building up to euro 2016 guys it's happening it's going down i have to give it to my german brothers out there your boys vonicon your boy mo your boy um clown and the kid little miss havoc you know so that you know where is this whole german breakdown of the squad so they have so your boy your team love announced the squad on the 31st of May. So this is the squad that's going to be popping up. So I'll be taking man for man. And just giving my lowdown on each and every one of, um, I believe, the 23 that Yotim Love has picked. So first of all, we've got Manuel Neuer. He's the Berlin Wall. He's probably the best keeper in the world. He is the last line of defense for Germany. And he will play a vital part for Germany. Either defending against counter-attacks, being the sweeper keeper, or... If it goes down to penalties, your boy Neuer, that's just how the boy rolls. Mustafi, I don't know about him. He's okay, he's alright. Not that great. I don't really regard him really that highly as a defender. Hector, when I first, first saw Hector, I thought he was a brick. And I actually put him in the brick academy when, when I first saw him. But the guy has improved. He's definitely improved and he has definitely gotten better. So I'll, so I'll give him that. Um... Havidis, again, solid the defender. He's okay. He's all right. Um, but I don't really think that... Um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't really put him... I don't really rank him there highly. But he's just a solid, dependable the defender. Who knows? I, for me, I believe he's one of my favorite defenders in the world out there. The best ball-playing central defender. And he forms an amazing partnership with, with, with Boateng. And he had a very good walk, especially in the non knockout stage, being almost impenetrable. Um, so, home notes again, huge. Kadira, injuries, man. You know, injuries. You know, as like, first of all, is he going to be fit? That's, that's the first thing. A certain person wasn't picked because of his fitness. So, I'll, I'll put that sort of thing. But when he has played for events, especially, I think, I believe it was last season or even this season he's been very good he's been part of this group for a long time he knows this group he works well and he's a very useful box to box midfielder to have so he's very good in adding some strength and some meat to that midfield Schweinsteiger he's El Capitano he's the legend he's been with these with these boys since I believe 2000 I think was it that in 2004, or 04, when he had the po the pump on Italy and I was playing as a winger. So, is he going to be fit? Can Schweinsteiger still last in midfield? I don't know. I understand his experience. I understand what he brings. You've got to give me more, more, more than experience. Can he dominate a midfield like he used to? I am not sure. I am not sure. The Zillage. Again, you know, Zillage, he's like, man, might you either love him or you not really love him or hate him. He, you know, divides opinion. Some people think he's an amazing player. Other people like me think he's slightly overrated. So fact of the matter is he's still an amazing through ball specialist. He has an amazing playmaking man. And he's still, he's still one of the best. Not the best. He's one of the best playmakers in the world. He will be important in with, with regards to setting up and creating opportunities for Germany. Dr. Dre Schola. Crap season for um, Wol Wolfsburg. It's not happened for him at Wolfsburg. He's not really shown the kind of promise he had when he was at, at Chelsea. He can still be useful on the wing and as an attacker winger. And I just think that Yutrim Love just needs to give him a boost of confidence and just try and make him believe in himself. I say, yo, do, do, Dr. Dre, remember, this is the dude that set up the assist for Godson with the winning goal. Bring that Chelsea form that you had, had within you. Play with that unabashed um, um, confidence. You know, because I think that if you can get the best out of Shola, he is an impact player and he can form a very important component in the attack. Um, Podolski. Draxler. Um, the Drax had a very good season for Wolves, but Wolves did not have a, a, a great season. Um, but I think Draxler was the one shining point of him. He is finally living up to the name. I heard so much about this guy, so much hype. I was like, why are people hyping up so much? This guy's a very good dribbler. 
He's a very good footballer. This guy has talent. This guy with his both his feet is very good on the ball. And I think that he will be a very interesting component for Germany because yes, you have your technical players, your dependable players. This guy's a, a, a dribbler. This guy's he's he brings he's on the streets. This guy brings that streets knowledge into this pitch. So he can, he can bring that streets knowledge into the pitch and he can be employed. 75th minute, 65th minute, players are tired, go in there and attack those tired defenders. This guy can be a very useful player off the bench. I'm not sure whether he's, he can be a starter, but off the bench, this guy can be very, very useful. Um, again, Brent Le Leleno, one of the best keepers out in the world. I think that this guy is definitely top five and a very good understudy for Manonoya. So very useful if anything happens to the Berlin Wall. Thomas Mola, big time, box office. He is... I think he can be a top scorer in this tournament. This guy's already doing amazing things for his for his age. Um and the the dude is 26. The dude is 26 and is literally at the cusp of being the all-time leading World Cup goal scorer, which we believe we're gonna break that record in Russia. I think that for Mola. He is the real X factor for Germany. He's the guy that it will, people will look to to get those goals and look to to really open things up and open that booty up for. So for Muller, one of Germany's most important players in this team. A lot is expected of him, and I think he'll have a little bit of pressure to come through. Emre Chan, he, I, you know, I'm not a big fan of him. Really, is he good enough to be a starter? No, I don't think so. But he's just useful. You know, he's useful just to have within the squad. I don't really trust him that much. Weigel, very good player, was part of an amazing, amazing Dortmund season. Um, and who knows, this guy could start. He could start. Because I think this guy is a really, really nice mid midfielder. And if, you know, Schweinsteiger isn't really up to it, you know, Weigel, he's young. He's only 20. I think he can step, step up, up to the plate and really do a really good, important job in central midfield, perhaps uh, partnering your boy, Tony Kroos. Um, Rudiger, again, for Roma, it was on and off. Sometimes he had good defensive displays. Other times he was a bit too, too rash in, in defending. I, I made a few mistakes, but I still think that he can be... Um, he can't start. I mean, 100%, he is definitely behind Boateng and Hummels, 100%. But if anything happens to them, he can be brought in. But I think just Yoshim Love just needs to tell him that learn from Boateng and Hummels. Learn from these boys. Be these boys under, under studies and try and just um, extract the way in which they, they play. I .e. read the game. Don't be rash. Don't give away any stupid fouls. Read the game. Read the game. Win the game. Trust within your anticipation, and do not rely on having to make last ditch tackles. So, um, for Boateng, one of the best central defenders in the in the world, um, as I said, with Hummels formed an amazing partnership with with Hummels. Um, I think this is one of Germany's strongest parts of the team is that central defensive partnership. Once Hummels, once that's um, World Cup knockouts started, started to go and Hummels and Boateng were united as one, like Voltron. That rhymed, I'm a rapper. It was amazing. So, for Boateng, you know, expecting to be, he again, a very, very, very important player for, for Germany because of his, his defending, because of how he reads the game, his tackling, his timing, his intelligence, his understanding of the position, um, how he's grown and matured as a central defender, and also what he can do bringing the ball up and those long diagonal balls that he can play, um, starting off counter attacks, um, which is also something that Homos can do. So, you've also got, you've got two central defenders who are amazing at defending, but are also amazing on the ball and can actually add to a counter and a transitional play from defense to attack. Um, Tony, Tony Cruz, again, man. Excellent central midfielder, right foot, left foot, amazing on passing range. He will be important. You know, he'll be, because he's sitting right there in central midfield. He just doesn't attack. He's right in the heart of the midfield. The midfield is extremely crucial. You win the midfield battle, that says a long, well, that goes a long way in winning the football war. And Tony Cruz is a very important soldier for winning the midfield battle because of just how good he is in that position. By and why the hell did you sell him? Mario, Mario, Luigi, Mario, Mario Gozza. 24. He's still young. 
There is still time, but my God, sir, we are waiting for you to announce yourself into the world. Yet again, it's another tournament for him. Yet again, it's the time for him to prove himself. But rather than just scoring the winning goal for the World Cup, I think Maragosa is going to be featured a lot more in this team. Um, he has to show himself to the world that, yes, this is what we've been hyping for um, with regards to the Germans, you know. So I think for Maragosa, again, I'm looking for him to play a very important role in the counter-attack, in the playmaking, in the attacking, in running off the ball, in creating goals, in scoring goals. You know, I'm looking for Marigota to unleash his frustrations with being left on the bench for, for, for Pep, unleash the anger in this tournament. So I want Marigota, I know Muller's going to be big, I want Marigota to have a big tournament because a lot have been said about him and I'm a supporter of him because I think this guy is technically amazing. Marigota, show yourself to be that player that people believe you can be. Leroy Sané, along with Weigl, one of the um, young boys, again, 20 as well. These boys are young. Um, young boys picked again for this team. Easily Schalke's best, best player. He's not a starter. Who knows what he can do off the bench? 1-1, one, one, game is tight. Players are tired. You bring in that sp speed. You bring in that, that direct play. You bring in a guy who can get on the wing, go to the byline, pop the, 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 the ball off, uh, across the goal for Mario Gomez or Muller. He can be of use depending on what the match is like, but he's not yet a starter. Way too young to be a, a starter. Even if he's the same age as Weigl, I think Weigl has shown that he's much closer to perhaps starting than I, I believe Sane. Kimmich! Very good, good form for Barney. You know, Pep entrusted him, puts, puts him into the, the team. But again, he's behind that pecking order. I believe he's a central defender. Can he play as a DA, defensive midfielder? But again, off the bench, just within the squad. If needed be, I think that Love can, your team Love has enough confidence that he can bring him in if he is needed. Stiegen, again, another um, three great keepers for um, Germany. Three really good, good, good keepers. I doubt that Stiegen will really play or Brand, or no, or um, Lele, no, but again, it's just good to have. You have, you don't, you know, you're not putting in a brick. You don't, you know, that you don't have a brick amongst your keepers if anything happens. So, worst case scenario, you've got three, you've got two great keepers to come into the fray. And Mario Gomez, as I said before, I said he had to go. 38. You guys, so this especially. is the official blog. This is where you can keep in touch with all of the kids. Um, latest blog posts, as you can see here. Um, so let's just um, pop right into um, one of these blog posts um, about my boy, the Reno. So obviously you can go in there, read with what I have to say, but also as well, um, there are links to the website. So if you want to quickly pop into the forum, you want to vote in the opinion poll, you want to look at my latest podcasts and videos for the Premiership, Bundesliga, Serie A, La Liga, video analysis, my best 11, they're all right there on the right-hand side. If you also want to subscribe, you can pop your email in here. And I think the thing that I find the most interesting is what I call the discuss comments. All you need is your Twitter or your Facebook account, and you can comment on all of my different blog posts. So you don't need to go through a whole long-winded shebang, bada-bing, bada-smacks. It's simple in there. So please comment, get into the discussion, have your views on my different blog posts. And um, yeah, man, keep it going. Keep it living the football hot. We shall try, strive to be the best that we can be for the best football analysis.